Nike have dominated the performance shoe running game, however in recent years most of the brands have been catching up. In fact, some areas I would argue other brands such as Asics and New Balance are better alternatives than Nike, especially in the category of training shoes where Adidas have the Adidas Adios Adizero Prime X, which is count of stand is better than any training shoe Nike has to offer. Comment your thoughts if you have tried any of Nike's training shoes and what you think they're like and also what you think the best training shoes on the market at the minute are. This video covers one new shoe where this could change entirely and that is the Zoom Fly 5 which has had a complete redesign and upgrade since the Zoom Fly 4. So what does this new shoe feature and why is it a good thing? First of all there is the full length Zoom X scrap. This is new to the Zoom Fly because in previous renditions of the shoe it has been React foam which Zoom X to React is day and night, like they're so completely different foams and the Zoom X is such a better performance foam than React. For me, this foam's biggest strength is impact reduction and that is the key thing you look for in a training shoe as you try to reduce the impact your legs receive and ultimately aid in recovery, allowing you to recover quicker for the next session. One thing to note is that the Zoom X scrap is actually recycled Zoom X, left over from the production of other models and I have heard, even though I haven't tried it, it is slightly firmer. The other foam, SRO2 Carrier Foam, has been seen in the likes of the Nike for Miro 15 and 16 and this is a bit of a firmer foam and it's really not really a super foam but it just does the job of providing more support it also provides a bit more durability because the foam is a bit harder and that is a good thing in a training shoe really because you want to keep it for hundreds and hundreds of miles whereas in a racing shoe you probably wouldn't want that because you're not using it for as many miles so this is a good thing It'll probably add a bit more weight and take away a bit of the performance edge, but it'll increase the mileage and make the shoe more versatile. Full length carbon plate isn't new, and in a shoe industry that is dominated by carbon plates, I'm not going to sit here and explain the benefits of a carbon plate, but it's essentially, if you don't know, when the foam compresses in a shoe, that's what causes the push off. So essentially the carbon plate and the foam combination is what gives you propulsion forward. There is an argument as to why you'd want that in a training shoe. I personally like it in a training shoe and others don't want to make training feel like racing and want a bit more of an honest effort. But for me, I love carbon in training shoes just because it feels like race day and it just allows you to hit splits and targets. And training isn't meant to be extremely hard all the time. And as long as you know that you're probably getting a push with the carbon plate, you can adjust your target times to match that. Updated silhouette that is connected to how the Vaporfly and Alphafly is. And for me, this is a big thing because the Zoom X or any shoe, what isn't like the racing shoe, it can be a big difference whereas if you're training in a silhouette or a shoe design what feels similar to the racing shoe it feels more natural when you transition into the racing shoe so i think this is a big thing and also they've mentioned how the forefoot and heel will be wider and i think this just creates more versatility for the shoe because it adds stability and also adds a bit of comfort so it will feel less uncomfortable doing easy miles which i know some super shoes don't feel great when you're jogging or going slower Whereas in a training shoe, you kind of want to be able to have that for fartleks or long runs. Where well, you're not just doing rep pace, you're also doing jogs in between. So that is another reason why the Zoom Fly 5 has, I guess, an upgrade is just more comfort and stability. Obviously, the major difference between this shoe and the previous models is the Zoom X foam. In my opinion, that is the difference between me buying the shoe and not. Because I'm not really a fan of React foam. And like I said, it is day and night. So it is a huge upgrade, like a really drastic upgrade in that department. And whilst we're on the subject of new Nike shoes, the Zoom Fly 5 isn't the only model we're expecting this year from Nike. There is also the Pegasus Turbo Nature. And if anyone's from Nike is watching, please can you answer why would you discontinue the Turbo 2, which was a fan favorite and is an amazing training shoe, to then bring out a recycled version of that shoe when you're not producing the original version of that shoe anymore. It doesn't quite make sense to me. But that shoe again has Zoom X and it just looks like a promising training shoe. What you've got there is the Streak Fly for the faster training. You've got the Pegasus Turbo Nature for, I guess, a variety of training. And same with the Zoom Fly 5. It's quite a big upgrade and transition for Nike to sort of up their training game where they have seemed to lack in recent years, which will probably put them above, in my opinion, Adidas and A6 again. Because at the minute, I think they're actually below Adidas and Asics and even possibly New Balance in terms of a variety of shoes. And also, whilst we're on the subject of shoes, we did a 2022 rotation video, which you can go and check out now. And also, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment your favourite shoes at the minute, as we're always interested to try out new shoes. Thank you and goodbye.